Zayd ibn Haritha Arabic, Zayd bn Harth c. 581-629 CE, also known as Zayd ibn Muhammad, was a companion of Muhammad who was at one stage regarded as his adoptive son. He is the only companion who is mentioned by name in the Quran 33 Childhood Zayd is said to have been ten years younger than Muhammad, suggesting a birth year of c. 581 AD. He is also said to have been 55 lunar years old at his death in 629, indicating a birth date of 576. He was born into the Udhra branch of the Kalb tribe in the Najd, Central Arabia. He claimed a pedigree 12th in descent from Udhra ibn Zayd al Lot ibn Rufayda ibn Thar ibn Kalb ibn Wabara. Zayd's mother, Suda bint Thalaba, was from the Mon branch of the Tayy tribe, when Zayd was a young boy of an age at which he could be a servant. He accompanied his mother on a visit to her family. While they were staying with the Mon tribe, horsemen from the Qayn tribe raided their tents and kidnapped Zayd. They took him to the market at Yukas and sold him as a slave for 400 dinars. Zayd's family searched for him, but without success. A lament is attributed to his father, Haritha ibn Shirahul. Topic: <laughs> Slavery in Mecca. Zayd was purchased by a merchant of Mecca, Hakim ibn Hizm, who gave the boy as a present to his aunt, Khadijah bint Kuwaylid. He remained in her possession until the day she married Muhammad, when she gave the slave as a wedding present to her bridegroom. Muhammad became very attached to Zayd, to whom he referred as Al-Habib, the Beloved. Some years later, some members of Zayd's tribe happened to arrive in Mecca on pilgrimage. They encountered Zayd and recognized each other, and he asked them to take a message home. On receiving this message, Zayd's father and uncle immediately set out for Mecca. They found Muhammad at the Kaaba and promised him any ransom if he would return Zayd to them. Muhammad replied that Zayd should be allowed to choose his fate, but that if he wished to return to his family, Muhammad would release him without accepting any ransom in exchange. They called for Zayd, who easily recognized his father and uncle, but told them that he did not want to leave Muhammad. For I have seen something in this man, and I am not the kind of person who would ever choose anyone in preference to him." At this, Muhammad took Zayd to the steps of the Kaaba, where legal contracts were agreed and witnessed, and announced to the crowds, "'Witness that Zayd becomes my son, with mutual rights of inheritance." On seeing this, Zayd's father and uncle, "'were satisfied' and they returned home without him, in accordance with the Arabic custom of adoption at the time, Zayd was thereafter known as Zayd ibn Muhammad, and was a freedman, regarded socially and legally as Muhammad's son. <inaudible> Conversion to Islam At an unknown date before 610, Zayd accompanied Muhammad to Taif, where it was a tradition to sacrifice meat to the idols. Near Balda on their way back to Mecca, they met Zayd ibn Amr and offered him some of the cooked meat that Zayd was carrying in their bag. Zayd ibn Amr, an outspoken monotheist, replied, "'I do not eat anything which you slaughter in the name of your stone idols. I eat none but those things on which Allah's name has been mentioned at the time of slaughtering.'" After this encounter, said Muhammad, "'I never stroked an idol of theirs, nor did I sacrifice to them, until God honored me with his apostleship. When Muhammad reported in 610 that he had received a revelation from the angel Gabriel, Zayd was one of the first converts to Islam. While Khadijah was the first Muslim of all, she was closely followed by her neighbor Lubaba bint al-Harith, her four daughters, and the first male converts, Ali, Zayd and Abu Bakr. The Hijra In 622, Zayd joined the other Muslims in the Hijra to Medina. Once settled in the new city, Muhammad urged each Muslim to take a brother in religion, so that each would have an ally in the community. Zayd was paired with Muhammad's uncle Hamza. Hamza accordingly trusted his last testament to Zayd just before his death in 625. A few months later, Muhammad and Abu Bakr sent Zayd back to Mecca to escort their families to Medina. 
The return party consisted of Muhammad's wife Sada, his daughters Umm Kulthum and Fatima, his servant Abu Rafi, Zayd's wife Baraka and their son Usama, Abu Bakr's wife Umm Ruman, his children Asma, Abdullah and Aisha, and a guide named Abdullah ibn Uraikat, and Abu Bakr's kinsman Tala also decided to accompany them. Marriages and children Zayd married at least six times. Dora Fakita bint Abi Lahab, a cousin of Muhammad. They were divorced, the dates are unknown, but Dora's two brothers were divorced from Muhammad's two daughters in 613. Umm Ayman Baraka, Muhammad's freedwoman. They were married, after Islam, and their son was born in 612. Hind bint al-Awwam, a niece of Khadijah. Humayma bint Saifi um the widow of al burra ibn Maror, a chief in Medina. al burra died in August or September 622, so the marriage to Zayd was presumably in or after 623. Zainab bint Josh, a cousin of Muhammad. They were married in 625 and divorced in late 626. Umm Kulthum bint Uqba, a maternal sister of Caliph Uthman. This marriage was ordered by Muhammad in 628, but it ended in divorce. Zayd had three children. Usama, son of Baraka, who had descendants, but their number never exceeded twenty in any given generation. Zayd, son of Umm Kulthum, who died in infancy. Rukhaya, daughter of Umm Kulthum, who died while under the care of Uthman. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marriage to Zainab bint Josh. Around 625 Muhammad proposed that his cousin, Zainab bint Josh, should marry Zayd. At first she refused on the grounds that she was of the Quraysh. It has been suggested that differences between Zainab's social status and Zayd's were precisely the reason why Muhammad wanted to arrange the marriage. The Prophet was well aware that it is a person standing in the eyes of Allah that is important, rather than his or her status in the eyes of the people. Their marriage would demonstrate that it was not who their ancestors were, but rather their standing in the sight of Allah, that mattered. By contrast, Montgomery Watt points out that Zayd was high in Muhammad's esteem. She can hardly have thought that he was not good enough. She was an ambitious woman, however, and may already have hoped to marry Muhammad, or she may have wanted to marry someone with whom Muhammad did not want his family to be so closely allied. When Muhammad announced a new verse of the Quran, 33–36, it is not fitting for a believer, man or woman, when a matter has been decided by Allah and his messenger to have any option about their decision, if any one disobeys Allah and his messenger, he is indeed on a clearly wrong path. Zainab acquiesced and married Zayd, the marriage lasted less than two years. According to Ibn Sa'd and al-Tabari, Zayd bin Haritha, who lived in Muhammad's household and came to be regarded as his adoptive son so that he was regularly addressed as Zayd, son of Muhammad. Whether the marriage between Zayd and Zainab was a mesalliance from the beginning is speculation, though the account maintains that Zayd was not reluctant to divorce his wife and allow her to marry Muhammad. Muhammad is portrayed as reluctant to proceed with the marriage because of scruples about whether marrying one's adopted son's former wife violated the prohibited degrees of marriage. Arab customary practice recognized kinship relations not based on blood ties. Fosterage, having nursed from the same woman, was one such relationship. The question whether adoption fell into this category must have been unclear among Muslims. The marriage did not take place until after a Quranic revelation was received, giving permission for believers to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Topic: <laughs> Abolition of adoption. After these events, the traditional Arab form of adoption was no longer recognized in Islam, it was replaced by kafala. Three verses of the Quran were written about this. Al-Tabari states that Q33-40 was revealed because, "...the Munafikun made this a topic of their conversation and reviled the Prophet, saying Muhammad prohibits marriage with the former wives of one's own sons, but he married the former wife of his son Zayd." Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah, and the seal of the prophets, and Allah has full knowledge of all things. Zayd reverted to being known by his original name of Zayd ibn Haritha and was no longer considered Muhammad's legal son after the revelation of Q33-5. Call them by their father's names. 
Ibn Sa'd indicates that Q33 to 37 was a specific instruction to Muhammad and Zainab to marry and that it explains why their marriage was necessary. Behold, thou didst say to one who had received the grace of Allah and thy favor, Retain thou in wedlock thy wife and fear Allah. But thou didst hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. Thou didst fear the people, but it is more fitting that thou shouldest fear Allah. Then when Zayd had dissolved his marriage with her, with the necessary formality, we joined her in marriage to thee, in order that in future there may be no difficulty to the believers in the matter of marriage with the wives of their adopted sons, when the latter have dissolved with the necessary formality their marriage with them. And Allah's command must be fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> Military expeditions Zayd was one of the famous archers among the Prophet's companions. He fought at Badr, Uhud, Trench and Kabar, and was present at the expedition to Hudaybiyah. When Muhammad raided al muraisi he left Zayd behind as governor in Medina. Zayd commanded seven military expeditions. al Karada in November 624. He captured a caravan of merchandise, but most of the Meccan merchants escaped. al Jumam in September 627. Al is in October 627. At Taraf, a raid in the Nakal region, on the road to Iraq. Wadi al Qura. Zayd raided the area in November 627, but the Fazara tribe counter attacked, killing some of the Muslims, while Zayd was carried wounded from the field. Zayd swore revenge and, after he had recovered from his injuries in January 628, he returned to Wadi al Qura with a larger army. This time he defeated the Fazari. Hizma, or Kushain, against the Judim tribe in October 628. The Battle of Muta in September 629, where Zayd was killed, according to Aisha, "...the Messenger of Allah did not ever send Zayd ibn Haritha in an army without putting him in command of it, even if he stayed after he appointed him." <laughs> Death Zayd ibn Haritha led his final expedition in September 629 CE. A Muslim force of 3,000 men set out to raid the Byzantine city of Basra. However, a Byzantine force of 100,000 Greeks joined by 100,000 men from Lakum and Judim and Al Qayn and Bara and Bali intercepted them at a village called Muta. Zayd held the standard at the Battle of Muta until he was struck down by a spear thrust and he bled to death. The other two leaders, Ya'far ibn Abi Talib and Abd Allah ibn Rawaha, were also killed, and the Muslim army was routed. On hearing of Zayd's death, Muhammad went to the family. The daughter of Zayd wept before the Messenger of Allah, and the Messenger of Allah wept until he sobbed. Sa'd ibn Ubadah said, Messenger of Allah, what is this? He answered, This is the yearning of the lover for the beloved. See also Islamic adoptional jurisprudence Sunni view of the Sahaba List of expeditions of Muhammad Expedition of Zayd ibn Haritha disambiguation Um Ayman Baraka a wife of Zayd ibn Haritha Topic References Topic Further reading Powers, David, Zaid, The Little Known Story of Muhammad's Adopted Son, Pennsylvania University Press, 2014 Watt, Montgomery, Muhammad at Mecca, Oxford University Press, 1953 Watt, Montgomery, Muhammad at Medina, Oxford University Press, 1956 Lings, Martin. The Life of Muhammad from the Earliest Sources Lecker, M. 1960 to 2005. UDHRA. The Encyclopedia of Islam, New Edition. Leiden, E. J. Brill. pp. 773 to 774.